Okay. Good afternoon, people of God. Good afternoon, people of God. I'm going to give at least one more minute for some people to come on in. Okay, everyone, I'm going to go ahead and get started. For those of you who are not aware of who I am, I am Prophetess Sunita here today for Bible study. Amen. Happy Wednesday to everyone. I'm here today with YouTube and Facebook. YouTube and Facebook. Join me, everyone. Thanks for joining. Amen. The word for today, people of God, well, the topic for Bible study today is titled Understanding Who You Are. Understanding Who You Are. Amen. Let's begin with prayer. Father God, thank you so much for allowing us all another day, Lord, another chance, Lord, and thank you for bringing us this far, Lord. Thank you for bringing us through this day, Lord. Thank you for all your provision, Lord. Thank you for your angels, Lord. Thank you even, Lord, for using, allowing our ancestors to step in and help, Lord. Thank you for all that you do, Lord. Many today, people of God, are so confused in who we are. Help us to understand today, Lord who we are. We give you glory. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yes, the word for today is understanding who you are. And people of God, this is a great topic because many of us, we're not aware of who we are. We're really not aware of who we are. And this topic, this topic here is awesome because it's going to highlight a lot of information to a lot of individuals. And this is something we really need to know. Because this topic today is concerning something, a truth I didn't know at one time. It's concerning a truth I didn't know at one time. And we all, everybody has their point of time when we learn that certain thing. So, you know, this information is very profound information. And we need to know it. it's very important, important that we know who we are, people of God. And when I say understanding who you are, Many people are aware that they are a child of God. Many are aware that they are a child of God. And many are aware of why they consider themselves to be a child of God. And many, we say we are a child of God and we have our reasons why we may feel that we are a child of God. And it can be, you know, misleading information that may cause so many people to believe that there are they are a child of God. And many individuals who say they are a child of God, they are not children of God. They are not a child of God. Many believe, you have many individuals who are children of Satan and say they are a child of God. And you know what? They really believe that. And you may wonder, who can be a child of Satan and really believe that they are a child of God. After this study today, we're going to learn that there are, yeah, many are children of Satan, but you, they still consider themselves as children of God. And there's a reason why they really believe that they are a child of God. But today, the purpose of this Bible study, God wants us to understand who we are. 
He wants us to identify, to be able to recognize if we really are his child. <laughs> if we really are his child. And if we, you know, after this study today, it pinpoints you, you know what? Maybe I'm not a child of God. You know, we can take the time and take the actions to do what is required to become a child of God. Amen. Amen, people of God. Amen. Amen. Now, the reading today is coming from John, the book of John in the New Testament, chapter 1. The book of John, and I'm in the NIV version. Amen? The book of John, chapter 1, verses 12 through 13, is where I am today. The title, Understanding Who You Are. We, it's time to understand who we are. And when we, are, when we can... When we realize that we really that we really are a child of God, maybe we can represent him better. Amen? We can represent him better. Amen. Let's start at verse 12, people of God, people of God, John chapter 1, verse 12. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name. He gave the right to become children of God. Let's go over that again. Yet to all who did receive him, Christ, to those who believed in his name, who he is, he gave the right to become children of God. So we see here in verse 12, was required to become a child of God, to receive the Lord Jesus, to believe in him, to receive him, to believe in him, and to believe in his name and who he is. To receive him, to believe in his name, and to believe in who he is, we become children of God. Verse 13, children born not of natural descendant. So, what the Lord is helping us to understand today, becoming children of God has nothing to do with being naturally born. Naturally existence does not just qualify us to become children of God, of natural existence. Amen? We, are, we have been created by God. We have been created by God. We were created by God. But, you know, our natural existence being born here in this world through flesh, that doesn't make us, that just, it just, just doesn't automatically make us children of God. That's not sufficient enough for us to be considered as a child of God. Not of natural existence, not because of the flesh, not born of the flesh, not natural birth makes us children of God. Being natural birth, natural existence does not make you a child of God. Although God created us all for his purpose and he does desire that we are become his child. He does desire that we become a part of his family. Yes, God does that desire that people of God. But we have to also desire and want to be a part of his family and be considered as a child of God. We have to also want to be his child. We have to accept his son. Because you have to think about the people of God. You have many people who say, I am a child of God. And it's out of ignorance, people of God, you know, because oftentimes we really do believe that we are a child of God. And we choose not to accept his son. We choose not to receive his son. We choose not to believe in his son. We choose not to believe in who his son is and that he is the son of God. We choose not to believe that he, God raised him from the dead. But then we will say, okay, although I choose not to receive God's son and believe that he actually exists and he's the Lord and Savior, you know, I am a child of God. Now you think about it, people of God, women can, you know, relate to this very well. You know, there are many women, you know, a man, and I know I used to think like this, you know, I didn't want a man who won't accept my children. You don't need a man who won't accept your children. You want the woman, but you don't want the kids. No, that's a package. So to become children of God, you have to accept and receive his son. Amen. 
to become children of God. Now, I remember I was reading this book. I used to study this book, a purpose of the purpose of a driven life. I may be saying it wrong, a driven life, driven purpose of life or something like that. At this time, many people was reading that book. And I remember reading in the book that everybody was not a child of God. And I was like, this is not true. This is false teaching, you know? And I don't remember, you know, the continuation of the reading because, you know, I continue to read it. Because, you know, usually when you find something to be not so true or false teaching, you just close the book up. But I continue to read it. So it's, you know, it's obvious somewhere in the reading, it made me to understand why. Why, why was that said in that reading that everyone is not a child of God? In that book, it read, although we're all created by God, everybody's not a child of God. And I was like, what? And many today people of God believe that everybody is a child of God. And it makes sense that we think that way because the way I, my, my perception of it, God created us all, so that made us all his children. That's how I saw it. That's how I perceived it. And it's not true. It's not true. So today is a great day to take the time to understand who you are. Whose child are you? Are you God's child or are you Satan's child? Whose child are you? Understanding who you are. Because just because you walk around and say, I remember, you know, a young man, you know, told me a couple of years ago, he said, I'm a child of God. And later on down the line, the Lord revealed to me that this man, I think he's a witch or a warlock. And, you know, to be honest, I don't know if he really believed he's a child of God, but you can't be a witch and say you are a child of God. You can't be, you know, in a wicked family and say you are part of God's family. When you are a child of God, you are a part of God's family. When you are a child of God, you partake at his table with his family. You don't sit and partake with Satan and his family. So you're not, you know, a worshiper of Satan. You're not, you know, a witch. You're not, you're not. A child, you, you, you know, you can't worship and serve Satan and say you are a child of God. No, no. And it is possible that this man believed that although he is a witch warlock, he, it is possible that he can believe that he's still considered as a child of God. And I say it is possible because of the reason I believed it, because I believe because God created everybody that made everybody a child of God that made everybody his child. So may, there is a chance this individual and so many other individuals, although they may be working with Satan, serving Satan, worshiping Satan, living worldly, living a sinful life, they may really feel that they are still God's child because God created them. But that is not true. Amen, people of God. Amen. Verse 13, children born not of natural descent. So because we are born of natural descent, that is not sufficient enough for us to be considered as a child of God. Being born naturally, being born of the flesh does not make us a child of God, although he created us in our mom's womb and we were born of natural existence. That still does not qualify us to be considered as his children. Amen. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or husband or a husband's will, but born of God. So because, okay, to be considered as a child of God, it has nothing to do of being born of natural descent of human decision, nor of a husband's will. But to be considered as a child of God, we must be born of God. And we're going to get down into this and find out what it means to be born of God. Because we really need to know if we are God's child or not. You know, instead of walking around, you know, 
children of Satan saying, I'm a child of God, you know, and we may not view ourselves as a, a child of Satan, you know, we may not view ourselves that, you know, as a child of Satan, but we haven't taken the steps that's needed and sufficient enough to be considered as God's child. Amen, people of God. Now that's John chapter one, verses 12 through 13. Amen. And I am in the NIV version. I hope everybody's day is going good before we get started. Amen. All right. Now, what does it mean to be a child of God? What does it mean to be a child of God? And I just explained that people of God, you become a part of God's family. That makes you a part of God's family. You gain the advantages and the privileges that God's children gain. And one of our privileges is, you know, we can go to his throne anytime we want to. We have access to him at all times. And also we gain eternal life. Those are two privileges among so many more. Amen. Among so many more. What does it mean to be a child of God? You become a, you become a part of his family. When you become a child of God, you become a member of God's family. Is everyone, here's the question, is everyone a child of God? Now, I just explained that in the reading. Is everyone a child of God? So it is made to, no, known to us, no. Everyone is not a child of God. Now, God doesn't make it difficult for us to be a part of his family. He doesn't make it difficult. As he says, my, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He, you know, he, he doesn't make it difficult for us to be a part of his family. No, he doesn't. And we're going to understand how to become a child of God. What is required to become a child of God? Now, we just explained a natural way of existence is not sufficient enough. So we are aware that that natural born, that natural birth, that natural, that fleshly existence, being born of the flesh, that is not sufficient enough to become a child of God. That is understood. Amen. All right. We must be reborn. We must be reborn again to be considered as a child of God. We must be reborn again, which is considered as being born of God. So to be considered as a child of God, we must be born of God. We must be reborn again. <laughs> and how are we going to be reborn again? We must be spiritually transformed. Spiritually transformed people of God. Amen. Amen. Because, see, you know, as the reading began, it says that we must believe on Christ, believe in his name, believe in who he is. And when we become believers, we become filled with the Holy Spirit, which allows us to go through a spiritual transformation. Amen. So we must be reborn again, born of God, which means we must go through spiritual transformation. We must be spiritually transformed. And children of God, of God are filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, as I've taught also people of God, now when you're out there spending a lot of time in sin, you can deplete the Holy Spirit within you. So this is why when we're sinning in life, people of God, I know I speak on this a lot, always exercise repentance so that you may remain filled with the Holy Spirit and remain in alignment with the Lord. Amen? So we must remain, we must be reborn again. John 3, 3. Now, we're going to do some reading, people of God. Bring these Bibles out. Amen. Bring your Bibles out. It's a Bible study. Bring these Bibles out. Come on now. Come on. John 3, chapter 3, verse 3. John chapter 3, verse 3. John chapter 3, verse 3 re re reads, Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. Born again. Many may be considered as being baptized until his death. Being baptized. Being spiritually transformed. We must be born again. Amen. 
What does it mean to be born of God? Spiritually transformed. Now, spiritual birth, to be born of God, is spiritual birth, which is considered as the second birth. And the second birth is when we are filled with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit takes control. We allow the Holy Spirit to take control in our lives. But that second birth, to become a child of God, we must go through a second birth, which is a spiritual birth when you become a child of God. For no reason should we be a child of God, devoid of the Spirit. Which means when we are children of God, we should be led by the Spirit because the children of God, remember, have accepted Jesus Christ. We have accepted the Son of God. We believe in Him. We believe in His name. We believe in who He is and what He has done. We believe. We are believers. Children of God are believers. We become filled with the Holy Spirit. We receive that second birth, that spiritual birth. So that means as children of God, we should be led by the Holy Spirit. Now, although all of us, we've all sinned somewhere. And I don't think nobody can say they've never sinned. I've sinned. We've all, we're all sinful individuals. Amen. So that means we all participate sometimes with Satan. We've all had our, sh our share of being led by the flesh or that evil spirit. But as children of God, we should all be always be led by the Holy Spirit. When you're filled by the Holy Spirit, you will be led by the Holy Spirit. When you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you will obey the Holy Spirit. And when you feel with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will also tug you to repent when you sin. Because when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you also exercise repentance. So to be born of God, born of God, is not a flesh. It's a second birth. That's spiritual. A spiritual birth. Amen? There must be, and because of this spiritual birth, there must be a spiritual change. When we become children of God... And we are filled with the Holy Spirit. We receive his Holy Spirit. We have been birthed spiritually. We have received that spiritual birth. There must be a spiritual change. In our motivation and in the direction in life. There must be a spiritual change in motivation. And there must be a spiritual change in your direction of life. Why? Because, of course, there's going to be a spiritual change. Because, you, are, you, are, you know, when you become a child of God, you become filled with the Holy Spirit. And when you become filled with the Holy Spirit, you allow yourself to be led by the Holy Spirit. And when you allow yourself to be led by the Holy Spirit, you allow a spiritual change. There's going to be a spiritual change. Why? Because the Holy Spirit brings a change within us. As we're working with God... Allowing ourselves to live according to his word. Allowing ourselves to live according to his word. As we're walking with God, the Holy Spirit is working within us. And also, there, there, there's in that spiritual change, you know, our minds are being transformed. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen. So when we receive that spiritual birth as a child of God, there must be a spiritual change in your motivation, your desires, and your direction in life. Why your direction in life? Why should there be a spiritual direction in your life? Why? Why do we, you know, why should, you know, our spirit... You know, why should there be a spiritual change in the direction of our lives? Why? Because we want to be led by the Holy Spirit. So in that way, we're going in the direction God wants us to go. Because the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God. And we want to be led by His Spirit 
in the direction the Lord wants us to go. And of course, God always wants to lead us in a direction according to his will and plan for our lives. This is why I, I just mentioned, you know, we when we're filled with the Holy Spirit, you know, the Holy Spirit convicts us. We have that grace to, you know, it convicts us to repent when we sin. When you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you are a child of God. Come on now, you are a child of God. So when you wrong, you apologize to the Father. When we are a child, when we are children of God, we are responsible the word of God, what is it? First John 1 John 1.9, I think. That we should confess our sins because God is faithful and just enough to cleanse us of our sins. To cleanse us of our sins. So as children of God, we must remain cleansed. Allow ourselves to be cleansed. So as children of God, we should repent you know, me, I, I'm sure, I'm, I, I think I repent every day. Because if I'm not doing something sinful, or I'm thinking something sinful, or I'm thinking something, saying something that may not be so pleasing to God, and I may find myself saying, Lord, I'm sorry. As children of God, we must exercise repentance. So yes, as children of God, there should be a spiritual change in your direction of life. When you say, if you say, though you say that you are a child of God, though you say you are a child of God, can you actually say there is a spiritual change that has taken place in your life? There is a spiritual change that took place in your life when you became a child of life, a child of God. That you are allowing yourself to be led by the Holy Spirit. That's the direction you're taking. Because if you're not, then your spiritual direction is of Satan being led by the evil spirit. So when there's a spiritual change from the Holy Spirit, there should be a spiritual change in your direction in life. You should be willing to answer your call. Come on now. When you are a child of God, you should be willing to answer when your father calls. When we are children of God, we should still love our father. And want to remain in his family even when he chasing us in ways that's not comfortable and we don't like. Why? Because once we become his family, there's going to be a spiritual change. And as a child of God, we are, we, we are to grow spiritually. Spiritually. So the direction in your life should be led by the Holy Spirit. There should be a spiritual change. When you become a child of God, as a child of God, people should be able to identify you as God's child because of the direction of life, your direction of life, and what you do, and how you act, how you talk, your character, your moral conduct. People should be able to identify you as a child of God. We as our as parents ourselves, we tell our children, look, don't get in there and make me look bad. Don't get in there acting. You know how to act. Don't don't even think about making me look bad. Because when we take out when our children are out, we want them to represent us. We want, you know, people should be able to say, you know what, you have some well, well behaved children. Well disciplined children. Because of the direction of life, your life how you act, how you live in your life, your behavior, your character, your conduct, how you treat others, how you respect others. People should, as a child of God, when you are a child of God, people should be able to see where you respect your father. You can't say, I am a child of God and the way you live your life is totally disrespectful to God. 
You cannot say you are a child of God and you make no effort to try to live a life pleasing to him. Although we are imperfect, but as a child of God, we are responsible for striving. As the as Apostle Paul says, I press towards the goal. He, he, the Apostle Paul was aware he was not perfect. But he was trying to live according. He was trying to live a life that was pleasing to God. He was trying to live a life that is pleasing to God. So when you say you are a child of God, now you say you are a child of God. Others should be able to see it. Now, a few days ago, I think it was last Wednesday for Bible study, I was teaching those of the light. When you are a child of God, you should also carry God's light. When you are a child of God, people should be see God's light when they see you. Because we represent our Father. So when you say now that you are a child of God, others can see that. Just as others can see your light, they can see if you are a child of God. They can see it. And although we're imperfect, and although we are a sinful generation, yes, we are, people can still determine if you are a child of God or not. By how you live your life, how you treat others. And number one, and let's sum this up, a child of God respects his father and represents his father. And as a child of God, as the word says, you shall know them by their fruit. Amen. Must be a spiritual change in motivation and direction. Apart from this spiritual change, apart from this spiritual change, people are children of the devil. Apart from the spiritual change that takes place when you become a child of God, if you that spiritual change has not taken place within you, apart from that spiritual change, apart from God, apart from from being a part of God's family, apart from that spiritual change, then you become considered as children of the devil. You become children of the devil. Now we just explained now how to become a child of God. You must accept Jesus Christ, his son, Believe in him, believe in his name, believe in who he is and what he has done. What is it? Galatians 3.26. It is by faith. Your faith must be in Christ when you are a child of God. And I'm going to get some more into that now. When you are a child of God, your faith is in Christ. All ye, we are all considered children of God by faith in Jesus Christ. We are all considered children of God by faith in Jesus Christ. So that means we must also have faith in Jesus Christ, not in Satan. Apart from that spiritual change, apart from the requirements that's needed, that's sufficient enough to become a child of God, then you are a child of Satan. You are a child of Satan. When you are not filled with the Holy Spirit, you're not going to be led by the Holy Spirit. When you're not filled with the Holy Spirit, you're not, you're not able to live according to that spiritual change. Walk with that spiritual, walk within that spiritual change. And you find yourself becoming a child of Satan. Apart from the spiritual change, people are children of de the devil. Let's go to J read John chapter 8, verse 44. John chapter 8, verse 44. John chapter 8, verse 44. You belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. You see, with the, apart from that spiritual change that we need when we become children of God, apart from that spiritual change that's needed, when you don't have that spiritual change, 
you become a child of God, of Satan. And how are you able to determine? Your desires are always pleasing to him. Your desires are always of, of Satan. You belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. You spend more time wanting to carry out Satan's desires. Understanding who you are. Are you a child of God or a child of Satan? Understanding today who you are. Whose desires do you often want to carry out? Because if you often want to carry out the desires of Satan, you're living this sinful lifestyle, this wicked lifestyle. You spend more time pleasing Satan than you do pleasing God, than you are a child of Satan. Because when you are a child of God, although we do sin, and although every once in a while, all of us work with Satan, but when you spend more time with Satan, you have actually just given your life to Satan. You have chosen to live a life that's pleasing to Satan. You have chosen to do the things that make Satan so happy. Then you are, And some people now, they are aware that they are children of God. I mean of Satan. Some are aware now. If you're a witch, a witch doctor, wizard, warlock, you are a child of Satan. And I say there was, there was a young man that I was close to. He would say he was a child of God. And he would say he was saved. He would say, I am a child of God. And he would say, I am saved. And then it's revealed to me that he is a warlock, a witch. Could it be that he really believed that he can be a witch and still be considered a child of God? No. You cannot be a witch, a wicked individual like that, and be considered a child of God. You carry an evil spirit. What does the word teach us? There is no darkness in God. You're walking around dark. You're walking around soulless. You're walking around with a dead spirit. Children of God, our spirits are not dead. It should not be. And this young man, his soul is rotten. The Lord had to reveal to me, his soul is rotten. Walking around with a rotten soul, spirit completely dead, have given his life to Satan saying he's a child of God. No, people of God, don't even try to disrespect, dis disgrace God like that. Don't even try. We can't disgrace him, but no, no. That means me to me you're trying, no. That, that's, a dis that's a disgrace. To live a life that pleases Satan and you call yourself a child of God. You're treating people bad. You're always hurting people. You do anything. I mean, your life, you live a sinful lifestyle or an evil lifestyle. And you say that you are a child of God. As I just mentioned, when you are a child of God, you represent the Lord and how you live. And what you do and what you say, you represent him. So when you sit there, see this man here, although the Lord revealed to me who he was, God is not a man that he should lie. Because God, no, he was not lying and he don't lie. Everything about this young man was evil. Every action against me was evil. Everything I saw in this man was evil. He was mean. He was cruel. He was evil. Said, I'm a child of God. No, you're not. No, you're not. No, no, now. When your desires are always evil and wrong and sinful, you're cruel, you're mean to everybody, you treat people bad, you're always trying to hurt people, gossiper, messy, no, you are a child of Satan. You're not a good child of God. When does the second birth occur? Occur. When does the second birth occur? When does this, you know, 
when the Holy Spirit of God enters our lives, when does the second birth occur? And we just discussed that, people of God. When we become believers, there's a spiritual birth that takes place, which is that second birth. When does the second birth occur? To be a child of God, you must go through that second birth. It has nothing, being a child of God has nothing to do with your natural birth. The answer to that, once again, when the Holy Spirit of God enters our lives, that second birth takes place. Amen? Instead of following and imitating Satan, Satan, when we become children of God, when we can say that we are children of God, instead of following and imitating Satan, we begin to follow and imitate God. Now, when we are children of God, it says here, instead of following and imitating Satan, that means when you are children of God, you don't follow Satan. That means when you are children of God, you don't imitate Satan. See, right back to this young man who will always say he was a child of God. You know, now this young man does have a call on his life from God. But the reason he's resisting his call is because he wants to remain a child of Satan. So although he does have a call on his life from God, although God is trying to save this young man, he still must go through that spiritual birth to be considered as a child of God. He still must be a child of God to actually move in his call. You cannot operate in your call, in your purpose, your call from God as a witch. Instead of following and imitating Satan, that means as children of God, we should never, we should not be following and imitating Satan. Although, yes, we are sinners, but you don't spend a lifestyle of sin. You don't spend your life living your life following and imitating Satan, saying you are a child of God. Let's, let's use the example of Obama's, Obama's daughters. When they're out, they must represent their father. They, they need to act like they are, are Obama's daughters. You know, there's, there's, you know, they need to represent their fathers. When we are children of God, we begin to follow. Children of God do not choose to follow Satan. So children of God, when you are a child of God, you don't, you don't decide to be a witch. When you are a child of God, you don't become a, a, a witch, doctor, wizard, warlock. When you are a child of God, no, you no, you don't, that's following Satan. When you choose to become dark like that, or when you choose to live a sinful, dark life, you have walked away from God. You are living a life apart from God. Now, as I just explained. Apart from this change, apart from that spiritual change, apart from God, people are children of the devil. When you are following the ways of Satan, when you're following the ways of this world, living worldly, everything about you, everything about your life is of God. I mean, is of, is of the world. Is of Satan, flesh. Okay, you find yourself, you, 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 you become a child of the devil. Satan's people follow him. Satan's people imitate him. And as I say, this young man here, his character was completely dark and wicked. He was very cruel. And I had to tell him one day, you're so mean, you're so cruel, you're so wicked. And many people may say to you, well, we're all sinners. Everybody, we are sinful, but that doesn't mean everybody 
participates in wickedness. Just because we are simple people, that doesn't mean it's okay to become a witch, witch, doctor, wizard. It doesn't mean to live a sinful lifestyle. What is it? Romans 5.20, that grace covers sins. Now, in Romans chapter 6, verse 1, the Apostle Paul says, just ask us, just because grace covers sins, does that mean we should continue to sin? In verse 2, he says, uh, he says, God forbid. So, God, although we are sinful, that doesn't mean we should just live a sinful life. Because we are children of God now. Come on, we're understanding today whether we are a child of God or a child of Satan. And when you realize today, you know, yes, I am a child of God. I have accepted Christ as my Lord and Savior. I know he is the son of God. I believe he's the son of God. I have accepted him. I have received him. I believe in him. I believe in his name. I believe in what he has done. Okay, then. You have you you recognize that you are a child of God, then maybe we need to get our priorities straight when we consider ourselves as a child of God. Because when you are a child of God, no, you don't just you're not just out there living your life anyway on your own terms. A child of life, a child of God does not live their life according to their own terms. A child of God lives a life in service to God and his kingdom. Who are, whose kingdom are you serving? Whose kingdom are you advancing? God's kingdom or Satan's kingdom? Because, you know, now it just says instead of following and imitating Satan, we must begin to follow and imitate God. We must begin to follow God. Children of God should be following the Lord. Children of God recognize that they are here for his purpose. Children of God are willing to do the will of God. As Christ says, when the people came to him concerning his mother, his brothers and sisters, they say, your mothers and brothers and sisters are out there looking for you. He was busy, you know, talking with his disciples and they saying, your brothers and your mom, your sister and everybody's out there. He said, my mom, my mom, my brothers and my sisters are those who do the will of my father. Which means as children of God, we should be following the Lord. And when you follow the Lord, you have no choice but to fall into his will. Live according to his will. Because when the Lord leads you, he's going to lead you according to the will of his Father. So children of God, we should, we, when, you, when you realize or when you become a child of God, for those of you who say you are a child of God, have you chosen to follow the Lord? Have you chosen to follow the Lord? As a child of God, when your father called you, did you answer? I'm a child of God, but I know I got a call in my life, but I, I, I'm not going to answer. As a child of God, when our parents call us, I remember when we was growing up, our dad, he would be sitting in the living room with a plate that he wants somebody to put up. He would call all of us because it didn't make no difference to him. Who put it up? I just want every last one of y'all to show up. But when he called us, we answered out of respect. Because we were his children, we answered our dad. And when he called us because we answered, we answered to do whatever it is he needed us to do that he wanted us to do. Because when you are a children, you answer when your parents call you. When you are a child of God now, God is your father. So when our father calls us, we should answer. You cannot say you are a child of God and then when he calls you, you run. Well, a lot of us can be disrespectful like that. Yeah, a lot of us, we have children like that and a lot of us have been like that. Just disrespectful to our parents. Instead of following and imitating Satan, children of God begin to follow God. And they begin to imitate God. We, we shouldn't have a problem with following the Lord. 
when we say we are a child of God. We, we shouldn't have a problem with living according to his plans and his will. And I'm going to tell you why. Because as our, our earthly parents, our earthly parents, whatever plans they have for us, we will sit there and do it. We could want to be a doctor. If our the parents want us to sing, we sing. We want to make our parents happy. We want to please them. We want to make them proud. Many of us, they have allowed our parents to make plans for our lives. No. When you are a child of God, you are to follow him and live, live according to his plans for your life. Your parents need to be willing to accept the plans God has for you. Why? Because they have their own, but God has his plans for them. So when we're children of God, we shouldn't have no problem with following him and living according to his will. When we are children of God, we should be spending time with our Father, praying, fellowshipping with him. When we are children of God, we show love to our brothers and sisters, not attack them, not try to tear them down. You say you are a child of God and you try to ruin my reputation. You say you are a child of God and you're trying to take your brother's life. You say you are a child of God and you're doing smear campaigns on social media and on the streets. You say you are a child of God and you're trying to sacrifice your own sister for a house and for money. You say you are a child of God. But you cheat on your wife, leave your wife to go be with somebody. You do, we do some stupid stuff. But we still say we are children of God. We need to get our priorities in order. As children of God. And when you are, whether you are a child of God, answer your call. How does one become? I had Ephesians 1. Let me read Ephesians 1. I don't want to run out of time. Ephesians 1. Ephesians, no, Ephesians 5, 1. Ephesians 5, 1. In Christ, God forgave you. Follow God's example. Therefore, as dearly loved children, follow his example. That's Ephesians 5, 1. How does one become a child of God? We just explained that. And many individuals really do believe that everybody's a child of God. And as I just said, I used to think so too. I was at this church in Fort Worth and I was attending Sunday school every Sunday there. It's called, the name of the church is called Thy Word. And the preacher asked a tricky question, you can say. He asked everybody, is everybody a child of God? And everybody in the church for Sunday school that morning, that morning was looking like, uh, you know, because really they was confused because it, was, it seemed like a dumb question. He's asking us, is everybody a child of God? He said, okay, everybody that believes that everybody's a child of God, he said, raise your hand. He says, now those who say no, raise your hand. Me and another individual raised our hand. Everybody looked at us like, what, how, how, what did they, why would they raise their hand? And the preacher says, Sister Williams and somebody else, he says, they're correct. He said, everybody's not a child of God. And people were so amazed. People were so amazed. And did I see it as, oh, they're just dumb? No. Because I was once in their position. I used to think everybody was a child of God. No. You can't say you're a child of God and have, won't even accept his, his son. I, I'm, I'm, I'll accept you, God, but I, I ain't going to accept your son. Yes, you are. Moms today, you shouldn't even accept a man in your life if they got a problem with accepting your children. A single dad raising a child that woman can't accept your child no they can't accept you and according to god if you can't accept his son no you how can you be a no that's his son you must accept his son how does one become a child of god we must accept his son 
believe in his son, believe in his son name. Know that God raised him from the dead. You know, know that he is the son of God. And believe in what he's done. Accept what he's done. Receive Christ. How does one become a child of God? Excuse me, I just explained this. Receive Christ, who he is, and what he's done. Colossians 3.26. Let's read Colossians 3.26. Col I think I'm saying this wrong now. Colossians, I think I'm saying this wrong. It's Colossians, I think it's Colossians 2.6. Colossians 2, uh oh, Colossians 2, 6, let me see, yeah, it's Colossians 2, 6, I'm going to read it here from my, uh, word. okay, let me go back. Galatians 3.26. Now, I just mentioned Galatians 3.26 that we ye are all children of God through faith in Jesus Christ. That's Galatians 3.26. Okay, ye are children of God through faith in Jesus Christ. You're not children of God. Sorry, people of God. You are not a children of God. When you are a child of God, your faith is not in Satan. Your faith is in God. Ye are all children of God through faith in Jesus Christ. That means your faith as a child of God, your faith should be in God. Your faith should be in Jesus Christ, not Satan. There was a preacher I, I used to listen to every once in a while. And he was teaching Bible study. And um, he was saying to the people, he said he knew of another pastor who used witchcraft to help people. He says, he says, he tells his people, he said, and I believe this. He said, I really believe this pastor actually uses it to help people. And I was done with this pastor at that moment because I'm thinking, how can you be a pastor and believe that God needs help from Satan? If you, you, you want a pastor want to help people, so he used witchcraft. So that means a pastor that wants to help people has decided to go to Satan to receive help, to help people. He says, oh, yes, and I believe that this pastor is telling the truth. He said, I really believe that he uses witchcraft to help people. I believe him. And I was done listening to that pastor at that moment. A pastor should be a child of God. So a pastor is a child, should be a child of God. So why should a pastor have to go to Satan to receive help for God's people? When you have to use witchcraft, your faith is in Satan. Galatians 3.26 says, we are children of God through faith in Jesus Christ. That means, and what it is that you want, what it is that you need, what it is that you want to do, whatever it is that you're accomplishing, your faith should be in Christ, not in Satan. When you have to go to Satan, when you have to use evil words, when you have to use witchcraft, that means you have placed your faith in witchcraft. That means you have placed your faith in Satan. You're using witchcraft to accomplish something. Okay, that means you have placed your faith in Satan. You want to use spell work to make somebody love you. Okay, you have placed your faith in Satan. When all you can, all you have to do is put your trust in God and allow him to send you somebody. That means you don't trust God to send you somebody. You have put your faith in Satan. And I'm thinking, how dare this pastor to say that he, okay, that told me right then, no, something ain't right about this pastor. I was done. You cannot be a pastor and think it makes sense for a pastor to go and use witchcraft to help people. That means this pastor is saying he believed that God approved for this other pastor to use witchcraft to help others. Our faith must be in God and the Lord, not Satan. When you need to use witchcraft, I don't care who you are. Even if you feel that you are turning to witchcraft to help people. No, if you want to help people, that pastor that wants to that likes to help people, he needs to turn to God and ask God, Lord, what do you want me to do for you? What do you want me to do for your people? How do you want me to help your people? God can do his own work. God is able to use you his own way and how to help his people. Why would God send a pastor to Satan 
and say, go over there and knock on Satan door and just ask him, can you use the candy? No. You want to help people? So you go to say, that's, that's a lie. That's a lie. Say no help nobody. And I said to myself, you know what? This pastor who is saying this got some up his sleeve himself. Somewhere he's not right to say some mess like that. We must have the spiritual fullness of Christ when we are considering ourselves, when we are considered as children of God. We must have the fullness of the Spirit of Christ. Amen. Colossians 2 6. I was correct. Colossians 2 6. So then, I have it written down. So then, just as you received Christ, Jesus our Lord, continue to live your lives in Him. Colossians 2 6 reads So then, just as you received Christ, Jesus our Lord, continue to live your lives in Him. Now, the Amplified Version reads it differently. It says that when you receive Christ Jesus as your Lord, as you receive Christ Jesus as your Lord, it, the Amplified Version says, walk ye in him. Walk in union with him. Walk in union with him. So to walk in union with him, we must follow him as our father, as children. It says, walk in union with him, reflecting his character. When you receive, so now come on now, when you say you are a child of God, that means you have received his son. But the word right here in Colossians 2, 6 just says, when you receive as you have, just as you have received him, to walk ye in him, to walk in union with him, reflecting his character. Now, didn't we just say this, that we should, re we should represent God and our character, how we live and what we do, how we live our lives and how we treat others and our mouths and our actions. Reflecting his character and how we live and what we do. That means as, so that means if you have received Christ, if you are a child of God, you have received Christ. Now, Colossians 2, 6 says, now, if you have received Christ as your Lord and Savior, you know, you should be walking in union with him. That's what the word says now, that you should be walking in union with him. And the word is also saying, if you have received Christ as your Lord and Savior, that you should continue to live your lives in him. But it also says that you, you're, you, know, you should be reflecting his character. Your character should be reflecting his character. How you live your life, what you're doing, how you treat people, your mouth. Your attitude, your behavior, your conduct, moral conduct, your, your integrity, how you live and what you're doing, who you are, what you're throwing out there, who you're throwing out there, people of God, it shall reflect the character of Christ when you say you have received him. There was a young man I went to church with. I was, uh, you know, a neighbor of mine. I was going to church with him at Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship. And as I was sitting there, you know, I noticed, you know, they did the altar call where they call everybody up to the altar to be saved and to receive Christ and, you know, everything. And, you know, I said to this young man, because everybody was so many people was just going up to the altar. And I said to this young man, I wonder if they know what they're doing. Because, you know, many people, I really believe a lot of people just go up there. <laughs> they just go up there. Prophet Sunita, why do you say that? Because many people leave that altar with no intentions to change. Colossians 2 6 again just says, when you, once you have received Christ Jesus, just as you received him, to walk in union with him. So that means once you go up to that altar, to accept Christ Jesus, to receive Christ Jesus, be ready and willing to walk in union with him. Do not walk away from the altar. Continue to live your life the same way, especially if you know you're going the wrong way, especially if you know you're living a life of sin, especially if you know you're living a wicked life. Okay, when you leave that altar, you, you need to leave willing and ready to walk in union with the Lord. How? Reflecting his character, character and how you live and what you do. So that means when you walk away from that altar, people of God, 
Think about this. When you walk away from this altar saying that you have accepted Christ, when you walk away from that altar from now on saying you have received the Lord, that means you need to walk away from that altar understanding that you are a child of God. That means you are walking away from that altar understanding that you must respect God. That means you are walking away from that altar ready and willing to follow the Lord. That means you are walking away from that altar ready and willing to reflect his character and how you live and what you do. That means you're, will, you're ready to walk away from that altar ready to have a spiritual change and your motivation, your desires, and your direction in life. That means what you know you want to you're walking away from that altar, willing and ready to change. Changing how you live, what you do, your mouth, your attitude, your character. You're walking away from that altar after you have received Christ, after you have accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior. It's time to start walking away from that altar. Willing and ready to change. Not walk away from the altar and call, girl, what's up, girl? Yeah, I accept Christ today. So what are we doing tonight? You bringing a weed? What club are we going to? The no, no, no. You're walking away from that altar ready and willing to change. Ready and willing to live as a child of God. Ready and willing to live a life that respects and pleases God. Ready and willing to follow God. Ready and willing to answer his, his call if you are where he's calling you. Going up to the altar, accepting him. Saying, I accept Jesus knowing you've been called, but you don't want to accept the call. No, now as a child of God now. It's time to accept these calls, answer these calls. Amen, people of God. So I hope this helped a lot of people tonight, people of God, because many people do believe that they are considered children of God. Some people are aware that they are not. Some are aware that they are not. But if you are of the wicked, you are not. You cannot partake at Satan's table and God's, the Lord's table too. It tells us that in the word of God. You cannot partake at the Lord's table and Satan's table. I mean, at the Lord's table and Satan's table, yes. You, you know, you can't do it. Whose family are you going to eat with? Are you a member? If you are a child of God, you are a member of his family. Then you partake with us. But if you're over here and you're deciding to, to serve Satan and worship Satan and live this sinful lifestyle, remaining in the world, living a life that's pleasing to Satan. Okay, then that means you have been sitting and dining with Satan. You have been partaking with Satan, with his family. You are a part of his family. And for many of you, maybe it's time for you to go on back home. Go on back home to the Lord. You left your father. And maybe it's time for you to go on back home and be with your family. Amen? All right. I think I got it all. All right, people of God. Father God, thank you so much for this word. Thank you so much for this teaching, Lord. And thank you for giving me an opportunity. Thank you, Father God, for helping me, Lord, to just release this word, Lord. Thank you for those who join people of God. Lord, I pray a beautiful night. Protect us, Lord, and keep us tonight, Lord. Help us tonight, Lord. Help us at this moment, Lord, to understand who we are. Help us to acknowledge who we are. Help us to see ourselves. We give you glory, Lord. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen. People of God, I love you all so much. But God loves you so much more. And it is his desire that we are all a part of his family. Amen. Those of you who are not a part of his family, you're sitting in Satan's house, partaking with Satan, you know, chilling with Satan. You know, you are, many are aware that you are a child of Satan. That is your choice. That is your choice. Why? Because you have chosen to reject God. You have chosen to not accept Christ. But no, you're, you're not, you're not, you're not going to worship Satan and serve Satan and say you are a child of God. Because you're not. You're lying to yourself. Amen. People of God, enjoy your blessed night. Good night. Bye.
Good night.